Welcome back to Northwest Digital News. I'm Kevin Hunter with Chris Bornstad and Kyle Torgerson. You know, we have to do a little bit of housekeeping here on the staff because somebody got much older on uh, Saturday, was it, or Sunday? Sunday. Sunday. Kyle Ferguson down at the end uh, had, um, I, I wanted to say that your 15th birthday party was exceptional. Thank you so much, yeah. Um, I had a lot of friends, what I mean a lot of friends, I had my old uh, drum instructor wish me a happy Super Bowl day. Awesome. It was <laughs> pretty great. Um, yeah, I turned 20 at 5 a.m. February 3rd. Awesome. Yeah. Well, happy birthday, Kyle. Thank Chris, you, you want to say something about that? Happy birthday, Kyle. I just <laughs> mentioned that yesterday. <laughs> yeah, I saw the invitation for a nice burrito, was it? Yeah, and you missed out. I missed out heavily. You did. Missed out on some goodness there. Yeah. All right, uh, Kyle, hit us up with the weather. Oh, man, the weather? Are you sure about this? Are you sure about I don't know. Weather? Maybe we don't want to know. Well, you know what's expected today? Snow. Snow is expected. That's right. Today's going to be a high of 35 and a low of 20. Snow will be or should be expected today. Um, tomorrow and the next two days after that, this going to be an average of 40. The sun's going to be out, and it, at night it's going to drop to about 25 degrees on average. Mm -hmm. um, so snow is that season. You know, there was actually a little bit of snow in my vehicle this morning. Just a tiny bit, but yeah. I could see it was drying overnight. I haven't seen any snow yet at all. <laughs> Chris is not impressed. I am not impressed. Yeah. This is usually the time, Kevin, where you're like, well, back in Minnesota, <laughs> um, it wasn't, you know, snow until it was like nine feet deep, but then you know it was snow. It was like one of those things, you know? All right, so we got our uh, call going in the background. We did our call get disconnected by any chance? All right, so you guys, we're going to talk about uh, surviving diabetes and Parkinson's here on the show today. And we have uh, Larry Byman on the line with us uh, to talk about this. Larry, are you there? Larry is not there cu currently. Okay, so Kyle needs to reestablish that connection. Yes, it's one of those things. So how, got, how was uh, you guys' Super Bowl? And I, ha I just want to make sure that we don't have a, a static. Are you, any of you guys hearing static on your line there? I'm not hearing anything. I'm hearing static on mine, so it's got to be this extension card. All right, let's move your phone here so I can eliminate this out of the lineup. Sometimes our connection's here on the... All right, yeah, that's really clean. If something's wrong with that cord. All right, so we're going to talk about uh, surviving diabetes and uh, Parkinson's here on the show. And a little bit of background, um, Larry Byman was diagnosed with uh, diabetes and Parkinson's. We're going to find out exactly when all this happened um, and then some of the steps that he took to address it. And you're going to absolutely love to hear this story because um, it's one of those bummer stories as it starts out but has a really terrific ending. So, Larry, do we have you on the line now with us? Yep, I'm here. All, all right. So, for the benefit of our viewing audience and anybody who may not be familiar with uh, who Larry Byman is and what you've done in our local community, if you would, um, share with us your age, first of all, because this is pertinent to um, this story even about uh, diabetes and Parkinson's and then what your role was in the community in Longview for actually a great number of years. I am 68 years old and my profession was high school biology teacher, 32 years at Mark Morris High School. Um, I was anywhere from just a regular classroom teacher to a classroom teacher plus teaching other teachers and then the last 19 years or so I was also the department head for the for the department science department at Mark Morris and so I had years and years of contact with young people and and gotten to know the community as a matter of fact there's times I feel kind of like I live in a fishbowl because there's so many people around here who I know and they know me um, but it's great, and I enjoyed my profession. Talk about just briefly um, the, the years that you spent teaching biology, working in the area of the sciences. How valuable was that background to the discoveries that you've made health-wise in the last couple of years? 
the value is that I was able to understand the science behind the reasoning for changing diet, for taking certain supplements, uh, the interaction between those and what's going on in your body at the cellular level mm -hmm. with mitochondria and cell membrane, etc. So it just made a lot of scientific sense to me from the uh, my background and, and my degree mm -hmm. is in microbiology so there was a lot of information also about uh, parasites that uh, we'll probably talk about here during this segment um so it's, okay. uh, very, it's been very valuable very. okay so i'm curious about something before any of these uh health challenges um you know entered your life and you became aware of you know that you were dealing with uh these situations would you have considered yourself to be living a generally healthy lifestyle i did and uh for years i would go swim in the morning before school while the swim team was practicing or the water polo team, I was able to get a lane off to the side and swim in the mornings to get ready for school. And um, the first major health issue I had was some allergies. Mm -hmm. And those were treated and they cleared up in about three years. But then it was just kind of a little progression of one thing after another, um, starting with cholesterol, Mm -hmm. And uh, then at one point I was diagnosed with blood pressure issues, even though the spike in my blood pressure was a direct result of having been put on prednisone for a sinus issue. Mm -hmm. And um, I have not been able to convince the doctors that <laughs> my blood pressure issue was not anything other than medication induced and um but that has changed now with my change in diet my blood pressure is basically perfect e excellent news so let's talk about uh diabetes and parkinson's i'm going to start with uh, diabetes first um when did you when did you realize that you were diabetic was this a uh, an adult onset situation for you Yes, it was adult onset, and it happened sometime, um, I believe it was shortly after I retired, and mm -hmm. I'd been on various statins for cholesterol, and my blood sugar on one of the routine yearly tests was up a, a bit, and the doctor sent me to the diabetic classes that they teach over at the Monticello campus mm -hmm. of Peace Health and over time he wanted to put me on some medication and so I was taking one medication and then he added another and he said you know the, even though I was trying to watch my diet closely the blood sugars kept going up and he said we're well, you know we're eventually you're gonna have to be on uh, insulin shots and mm -hmm. I was just getting kind of frustrated with that. Then later I discovered that one of the statins I had been on is implicated in causing type 2 diabetes. Interesting. And I had, at the time that I discovered that was when I had been having a whole host of strange things, pains in my side, joint aches, muscle pains, foggy brain. And uh, because of a random visit with a friend, I got suspicious concerning the statin. And when he and his wife left from visiting with us, I went to the PDR online and discovered that there were 10 symptoms that a person could have because of the statin I was on. Mm -hmm. And if you had any one of them, they told you stop it immediately and call your doctor. I had five of them. Wow. So I did what it said there. I stopped it immediately, left a message with my doctor. Two months later at uh, the, my normal appointment, he said, you did the right thing and you put the fear into me and I will never 
prescribe any statin to you again. And so he just watched things for about a year and a half, and no matter what diet I tried, nothing would kind of bring things back into normal. And Mm -hmm. so he referred me to the lipid clinic at OHSU, and that's another whole story that, you know, I've been on a long-term international ischemia study, and there were things that they were able to do and test uh, under the auspices of that study, which my insurance would not have covered. So I, I got lots of good information there, but not necessarily the key to getting the cholesterol down. Okay, let's talk about uh, Parkinson's. Um, somewhere in this neighborhood that you discovered you're diabetic, this Parkinson's diagnosis came into play. When, when were you diagnosed with Parkinson's? I was diagnosed with Parkinson's in October of 20, uh, 2008, 2008. Okay. So this is, so you, and then you find out that you were diabetic after. So the, the diabetes challenge was added on top of Parkinson's. Right. I'm curious what were some of the medications and or therapies that the doctors recommended at that time, 2008 and following that. What were some of the medications and or therapies they were recommending to you um, for Parkinson's? Well, they put me on Cinemet, which is a combination of two of the dopas, carbodopa and levodopa. One of them needs to get to the brain and the other one is used to to combat nausea, which can be caused by the one that needs to get to the brain. And Mm -hmm. that was the definitive way that they were able to determine that the shaking that I was having on my, in my right arm Mm -hmm. was was from Parkinson's at, because within a certain amount of time of getting the, uh, the dopamine amount back up in the brain, the shaking was under control. Mm -hmm. And that's the only medication they gave me, but we did go to a Parkinson's conference in Eugene, Oregon um, that next spring, and there we learned about a whole bunch of different exercises and things of that nature that you can do to help um, delay the, the effects of Parkinson's. Uh, many of them were things that you do to challenge your brain, reading, learning a new mu- musical instrument, going in and taking a course to learn another language, teaching things to other people, just constantly challenging your brain. Mm-hmm. And um, at the time, we read an interesting book called uh, Aging with Grace, and the subtitle was The Nun Study. It was done on uh, an order of nuns in Minnesota, which is fascinating, mm-hmm. the things that they discovered there. And um, they all fit with the the information we got on what to do to help delay the, the uh, effects of the deterioration of the brain, which can happen in Parkinson's. Mm-hmm. So it was primarily, primarily the cinemet and then uh, of course, there's healthy nutrition, too, and I actually have a book that is nutrition for uh, people with Parkinson's uh, put out by a naturopathic doctor in Seattle, and uh, it deals with vitamins and minerals and spices and a whole bunch of things that how they can be used in conjunction with cinnamon and other Parkinson's medications to a point that generally the doctors are able to lower the medications that Mm -hmm. are being given and cut back on them. So really the conversations that you're having with various practitioners in the field um, and the understanding that you're having relative to Parkinson's. And this is the reason why I, I wanted you to share your age because today you're 68, but and there's some right. things that you did a, a couple of years ago that we'll get into here in just a moment. But at the time of your diagnosis, um, you, you had to be feeling like, a, at best, anything you could do would simply delay the effects of the diseases that you were diagnosed with. Is that, is that correct? 
uh, in a way, it it also felt like a, a long term death sentence in a way, mm-hmm. because I've known a lot of people with Parkinson's. Some have survived seventeen years. My mother in law had Parkinson's and died of the effects of it. She yeah. had been dealing with it for about seventeen years or so. Um, mm-hmm. A close friend of ours, father got it, and in three years was gone. And so there was just so much uncertainty. I was actually sort of at loose ends for a while, and I thought, I'm I'm kind of useless. I can't even teach anymore. There's I had to retire from all kinds of things that I was doing. Mm-hmm. Um, some of them were various forms of church work. I couldn't do it anymore. My brain would just get so fatigued. And in in the years that I've dealt with this, I've discovered it's because part of the brain that allows the normal functioning brain to ignore things that are not important starts malfunctioning, and you start getting too much sensory input, mm-hmm. and it's incredibly fatiguing. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it got to a point where I could barely make it through two periods of school teaching Mm -hmm. not because the teaching the delivering the information was so hard but because of all the hundreds of decisions and things you're having to make subconsciously and consciously (laughs) Mm -hmm. with the students Mm -hmm. and i just worn out after two hours um so i then i was half-time teaching for a while and then full-time medical leave and then retirement Let's fast forward to a couple of years ago. Um, you were in a situation um, then that you didn't dare attempt to drive to town on your own. There were mobility issues. Talk right. about what quality of life looked like for you uh, a couple of years back. Well, the one of the things that happens often with Parkinson's people is that you get what we can only describe as brain fog. Mm-hmm. and. There were times when I'd be driving either to or from town, and we live 15 miles out in the country, mm-hmm. and part way along the trip, I would realize I'm having trouble focusing on what I'm doing, and there were times I'd pull over and park and just wait a while and then head home. And I, it, it was unnerving enough that I told my wife, you're going to have to do the majority of the driving. I, I, I don't trust myself some days. Mm-hmm. There would be days when it'd be okay, but not always. Mm-hmm. And so she, for the last, uh, well, until last October, was doing 95 to 97% of all the driving. Mm-hmm. So if I needed to go to town, she needed to drive. And it, it kind of, well, you lose freedom. Mm-hmm. Uh, you lose a part of your life in a way, and you really have to do a lot of planning mm-hmm. because a trip to town meant both of us. If it was for me, if it was for her, I'd just stay home. Um, and then all of my medical appointments, etc. She had to do the driving, mm-hmm. and uh, it was just not. The best of all worlds. Well, Lawrence, we have a picture on the back wall here of you with your wife, Barb, from a couple of years ago. And this right. was around the time that you suddenly have this aha moment that there maybe is something that you could be doing beyond just the medications and everything else, which are essentially just delaying the onset, the, the symptoms of uh, Parkinson's. You also have this aha moment. Um, what was it that gave you this glimmer that maybe there was a better path than the one that you were on? Well, it's interesting because there was an ad in the Daily News about a talk that was being given at the Red Lion in, uh, I guess it was September of 2017. Mm Mm-hmm concerning reversing type 2 diabetes. Mm -hmm. And it was in the evening, and my evenings at that time were 
oftentimes not very good. I'd be worn out. I didn't want to go anywhere. And so my wife, Barb, went. She said, do you mind if I go? I said, no, go ahead. She went, and when she came home, she was telling me all this interesting stuff that she learned. And I, and they were offering free consultation appointments mm-hmm. to see if, if what was going on with you was something that maybe they could help. Mm-hmm. I said, well, did you make an appointment? And she said, no, I couldn't do it without your, your agreeing to it. First thing in the morning, she was on the phone. I think she was their first call um, to make an appointment. And so within about a week or so, we had an appointment with, uh, at that time, it was a Dr. Christensen, Dr. Kim Christensen. He had worked in Longview for years and then got into functional wellness and functional medicine. And we went down for the appointment and he talked through what it was and told us what the protocol would be and what I would need to do, what kind of change in diet and what types of, of uh, supportive supplements I should take. And there would be weekly consults with them um, and it was a six month program. Mm-hmm. And I thought, you know, I've tried all kinds of other things. Mm-hmm. And to be honest, I was still skeptical. Mm-hmm. I thought I can try it. So we made the first appointment. And unfortunately, these things are not covered by my insurance. So it was all out of pocket. But I was to a point where I thought if I don't invest in my health, I'm not going to be investing in anything. Um, So we got the appointment, and at that consult, there was another young fellow there who we were introduced to, and I didn't really even pay much attention to to who this was. And then the next, but when we were leaving, Dr. Christian said, well, next week when you're here, you'll be seeing Dr. Duncan, this fellow here. He said, okay, and I thought, well, Christensen's probably just out. Well, it turned out Christensen was retiring and Dr. Duncan was buying his practice. Mm -hmm. And Dr. Duncan has just been fantastic. Enthusiastic, young, his, uh, young enough that he could be one of our children. He's in in between age wise, in between two of our sons, but just a wonderful person. And so we got started and I, followed everything as closely as I could. Christmas was a little bit hard, but I managed to get through it. And in January, so that was October 11th when I started. That date's almost like a new birthday for me. In January, about, oh, the 22nd, I think it was, I had my first diabetic checkup six-month diabetic checkup after I started this with my local physician, and I told none of the doctors that I was working with what I was doing. Mm -hmm. I just thought, I'm going to do this. So the Friday before, which would have been like uh, 18th or 19th of 2018, I went in and had my blood drawn, fasting blood draw. And they did check for A1C, for glucose, for all of the lipids, etc. And for the first time in almost 35 years, every single test they did was normal. Mm-hmm. All of the appropriate levels for the various lipids, triglycerides, cholesterol, everything. And when I looked at that, I honestly, my jaw about hit the floor. Mm-hmm. And my A1C went from 7.1 down to 5.6. Mm-hmm. Let's bring that so picture up of Monday, uh, Lawrence in the back. Uh, I'm sorry uh, to interrupt for just for a second. Bring the por- picture of Lawrence today um, up on the back screen uh, as compared to the picture over on the left. So unfortunately, that, that picture is a little bit darker, but you can see... Um, also, a fair amount of weight that you've lost since uh, September 2017 to current day. Do you, do you mind sharing what your weight loss has been? 
It's been between 30, 32 pounds, something like that, which is it's coming off at a rate that's easy to keep it off. Um, I'm not on one of those harmonic wave roller coasters. Right. Uh, so it, and, and as long as I continue doing the diet that I am, it just slowly comes off one or two pounds a month. And, and, um, so it gives a real good positive outlook. So the, I'm, I'm going to jump ahead just a little bit. Um, the, the diet sure. that you're referring to is essentially the keto diet. And right, and, and and what have you? Because the, the the keto diet now there is tons and tons of evidence out there of how great this is for health. But who would have thought? And would you have thought? I guess looking back uh, prior to September 2017, would you have thought that a keto diet could be the solution to solving the diabetes problem and the uh, declines that you were seeing with Parkinson's? Not in a million years. As a matter of fact, I don't know if I even knew at that time what a keto diet was. Mm -hmm. Because the diets that my regular physicians were putting on, both the cardiologist and my local physician who's been dealing with the diabetes, were low-fat diets. Mm -hmm. And to limit your sugar intake, Mm -hmm. you know, do a lot of artificial sugars. Well, I've had horrible trouble with aspartame, and I cut that out of my diet. Mm-hmm. It was causing other issues, um, and the phenylalanine, I cut that out, and I'd done that already, but um, I would have never imagined that a diet that's, uh, well, I've cut out carbs, the bad ones. Mm-hmm. I Very seldom do I have bread. I might have a little piece maybe every two months. Mm-hmm. Um, I've cut out sugar. Mm-hmm. Uh, and a number of and starches and a number of other carbs. I that I limit myself to carbs that are good for you. And there's all kinds of information out there, so a person can look up the good carbs. And on the fats, I limit myself to the fats that are good for you because some fats are good and some aren't. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And uh, two of the physicians that I see when they heard what kind of diet I was on, were a little concerned, but then they'd look at the results and they really didn't have much to say. Mm -hmm. And I I reminded them, I'm doing good fats from certain nuts and uh, the extra virgin olive oil, et cetera. And you, you can't argue with what's happened. It's right there in black and white and the numbers have stayed consistent for a year. Okay, there's Every two things. Every single blood draw has yep. had, uh, we've gotten good results. Okay, there's two things I want to make sure that uh, we don't run out of time on that we get a chance to discuss. Sure. So um, somewhere along the line, in addition to doing this uh, keto diet, somewhere along the line, um, you have a conversation with somebody or you discover that potentially the... Um, metal fillings in your mouth. People think of them as amalgams or whatever you want to call them, but the metal fillings in your mouth, somewhere along the line, you discover that potentially these are a problem. Um, What steered you in that direction? And can you share a little bit of that experience with people? Sure. In the process of doing the diet, the other thing that Dr. Duncan has taken me through is to detox from heavy metals. And people of my age frequently have amalgam fillings and also have an overload of lead in their body because we were subjected to paint with high lead content, uh, leaded gasoline, etc. So I took a test and they discovered that I had some metal toxicity. We didn't know the amounts. And he recommended going to, finding and going to a dentist who is trained in taking amalgams out to get the mercury out. Mm -hmm. And if a person wants to do a search on something called the smoking tooth, Mm -hmm. it'll shock you how much mercury vapor comes off of those fillings just during tooth brushing or dental flossing or tooth cleaning and how much mercury vapor is in a normal dental office. 
And so I decided that, and plus mercury uh, toxicity has also been implicated in Parkinson's Mm -hmm. because mercury is attracted to fat and it gets stored in the brain, which has a high concentration of fat. Um, Anybody who's read Alice in Wonderland, the Mad Hatter, was mad because they used mercury to in the curing process for beaver skin hats and so he went mad from the the mercury in the brain and that was very common in Mm -hmm. years past Um, so I went through the process of having the fillings removed and replaced with uh, um, composite I think they call it and there are a few other metals that are really not good to have in your mouth because they act as batteries which uh, cause other toxic things to happen and that's another whole line of research but uh, last July after having what we thought were all of the mercury fillings out I took a special UA test that was sent to a lab on the east coast mm-hmm. where they test for a whole number of uh, heavy metals and Mercury levels were pretty high, and they said you should expect that because having had them removed and then you're taking certain agents that pull the mercury out, and it's it's excreted in either your sweat or your fecal material or in your urine, all three primarily, mm-hmm. um, you expect it to go up. So I, July I had that test done, and then I had a tooth break, a uh, chunk break off a uh, month or two after that and I went back to the dentist and they discovered that underneath a uh, composite filling was a little tiny mercury filling still which doesn't show up on x-ray because the x-ray had a hard time seeing through the composite mm-hmm. got that fixed and um, went through some more detox and then got on a, a more rigorous detox that actually is aimed at helping to lower Parkinson's symptoms by targeting things in the brain. Mm -hmm. So then in December, I did the second UA for heavy metals, and the mercury is down to so low that it's considered zero. Excellent. And it, it was amazing to me, just amazing. But the other thing that was so cool is in that time after the last filling was taken out about October I realized I'm not having brain fog anymore Mm -hmm. it's virtually gone and our oldest daughter is married to a Finnish citizen lives over there my wife and youngest daughter went to surprise her in October I was able to drive myself to and from things in town with no problem at all (laughs) <laughs> None. That's fantastic. You, you mentioned so detox I've, a few times, uh, Larry. Mm-hmm. Um, how big a part was cleansing um, part of this strategy that you've been deploying here for the last, uh, well, sub, since uh, September 2017? <clears throat> well, the only major cleanse that I've had as far as actually doing something real specific was a parasite cleanse, and that was... I did it in October of last year, Mm -hmm. or no, no, Um, December. October, I started the second phase of of detoxing for that's uh, the protocol that's aimed at the brain. Mm -hmm. And then in December, I did a month-long parasite cleanse, which was stunning. Mm-hmm. The number of parasites that I that I got out of my system, and many of them are parasites that attract mercury mm-hmm. and lead, and they will give off their own toxins. And um, so, after that month, I was basically parasite free. And people have asked me, "Well, how did you get those?" Because we live in a clean society. Well, you know, we're we're much cleaner than some areas, but you might go do, doing gardening or whatever, and you'll get these things in, and they're 
the form of roundworms primarily, but also some liver flukes. And um, it was, I, I was stunned. Mm-hmm. I don't want to go into detail about how I saw the things because it's not very pleasant. But I actually took pictures of a number of them and shared them with Dr. Duncan. And he has had the same kind of results with numerous patients. And mm-hmm. um, he deals with a number of other uh, doctors. Dr. Pompa is the one who works with a lot of the keto diet and getting the mercury out. And then there's a Dr. Todd Watts and a, a Dr. Jacobson from um, Texas. Watts is in, in Idaho who uh, do the parasite cleanses and also uh, deal with Lyme disease mm-hmm. and uh, how to get rid of the the bacteria that causes all the havoc with Lyme. So that was the only major cleanse I've done other than the detoxing where you're taking supplements that shake the the metals loose and then binders that will bind onto them and help you excrete them. Mm -hmm. And uh, it has made a huge change in my life, huge change. Are you familiar with uh, intermittent fasting, Larry? And if so, do you do any of it in your uh, current lifestyle? I am, and I just, my wife had been doing it periodically, mm-hmm. and Dr. Duncan was encouraging me to do it, and finally I thought, you know, I've tried all these other things, I might as well try this, and so I've been doing it for, oh, uh, probably about, maybe about a year now, mm-hmm. and so for breakfast I have bulletproof coffee, and then I don't have my first regular meal until about noon or one o'clock and then there's an eating window that I have open um, six to seven hours within which I do my eating mm-hmm. and then I, about oh 16 to 18 hours that I don't eat and you have that be overnight and so in the morning when I'm still on the intermittent fast I do have the Bulletproof coffee, which is basically coffee with with a couple teaspoons of uh, grass-fed butter, mm-hmm. unsalted, and some MCT oil. Then I add some collagen, and sometimes I'll put a little uh, baker's chocolate with a couple drops of uh, peppermint oil and mix that up, and it's, it's a nice... Uh, break for the morning it carries me through till noon when i then finally eat and that has uh has also made a huge difference i never thought i'd be able to do it but here i am doing it uh, what what an incredible story and we have shared with a lot of people uh here on the show several times over well really since as long as we've been doing northwest Asia news we've had conversations with people about about keto and intermittent fasting and cleansing and all these different things that are, are vitally important uh, to your health. But how great it is to hear a story from somebody who has been dealing with two of the really complex diseases, diabetes and Parkinson's. And for a lot of people, uh, Larry, and you alluded this a, li- a little bit in your early comments, for a lot of people, diagnosis of these diseases is either a short or longer term death sentence of sorts. And um, what words of encouragement would you give to people who are diagnosed with one of these two diseases or other diseases? What words of encouragement will you offer them based on the personal journey and your experiences? I would say that they need to find a person like Dr. Duncan who has a proven track record of helping people make major changes in their life through diet and detoxification that um, give results. Mm -hmm. And all the, as a matter of fact, my youngest daughter is seeing Dr. Duncan because of some gallbladder issues and the results have been incredible. Mm -hmm. She's losing weight, she feels better, she's a young mother with a family that 
keeps her busy, and she was feeling so awful that there were days she could hardly take care of her children. Mm-hmm. And it the the results for her were within two weeks of starting the program with Dr. Duncan, and he yeah. uh, they tailor everything to the individual. Mm-hmm. And so there is help out there. You just got to find the right people. And Dr. Duncan has come numerous times to Country Village here locally to give talks on uh, thyroid issues. And he's most recently on Lyme disease and also on detoxification. And um, he this probably comes up about every three months. He's located in Vancouver, which is not that far, but uh, it's uh, well worth getting connected up with someone who has alternatives to the traditional medicine that um, unfortunately doesn't always work and frequently brings with it side effects that actually cause more problems. And I've had no side effects from any of the supplements I've been taking at all. Mm-hmm. All the all the results have been nothing but positive. So on a scale of so 1 to 10... There is, there's help. Uh, on ahead. a scale of 1 to 10, 10 being the, uh, being the highest, how strongly do you feel that uh, food and proper nutrition are the answers to the American health crisis? It would have to be so close to a 10 that I'd need to say 10. Very good. It has made such a huge difference mm-hmm. in my life. And like I've told people, and I said early on, had being a scientist and having a degree in science and having studied science and taught it for years, everything that I've been told and learned from the various people makes absolute sense. And I'm kind of a living experiment Mm -hmm. that shows the results. Mm -hmm. Um, It's incredible, absolutely incredible. Well, a fantastic story, and we appreciate you sharing it here on our show. Um, you have had conversation with uh, Dr. Duncan about us doing this interview here on Northwest Asia News, and he's expressed interest in joining us on an upcoming uh, broadcast. So I just want to give our, our viewing audience that heads up. Uh, we'll be glad to share uh, Dr. Duncan here on an upcoming show on Northwest Asia News to talk about a number of the, the different strategies that uh, he's using. And, you know, you, you guys, you just heard an, an absolutely amazing story from Larry Byman. I can tell you that uh, on my own um, side, having uh, been diagnosed with uh, rheumatoid arthritis going on now 18 years ago, and thinking about uh, all the different things that I had to do diet, nutrition-wise, and uh, how f- good I feel today as a result of having made those changes. Um, not long ago, I was sitting on an airplane next to a, a couple, turned out that the woman was the same age as me, diagnosed about the same time, and what brought the conversation on is I noticed how gnarled her joints and everything else in her hands were, and after we were chatting for a little bit, I asked, you know, if you don't mind me asking, when were you diagnosed with uh, arthritis? And it was interesting how we were within six months of being the same age, and diagnosed at about the same time, and she looked at me and I, I actually had to pull my driver's license out and show her that we were the same age because she completely did not believe it. And afterwards, she shared with me, she says, well, we need to have conversation. She was actually on this plane that she was, the, the trip that she was on, she was actually flying into the uh, Mayo Clinic down in Rochester to see doctors again about her arthritis condition. And she said, clearly you and I have had different advice on this route and I need to know what the heck you're doing. So it's really, uh, it's, it's no it's no rap against our medical field and our doctors and physicians that are out there doing a great job uh, for the most part on a lot of different things. But when it comes to preventative health, they don't actually know that much about it, unfortunately. So that's me saying that from my own personal experiences. And uh, so well, Larry, I won't ask you to incriminate anybody out there, uh, but but you've had a great experience, fantastic story, and uh, hey, 
God's blessings on a ton more uh, benefits for you moving forward, uh, Larry, because you know, I've, I've, you. I've, I've known you and your family a uh, long, long time, and it was very disappointing when I heard about your uh, Parkinson's diagnosis and seeing you in declining health, and to uh, see and hear you today, it's just absolutely amazing. Love to share this story with people in our audience. If I can interject one little anecdote. Sure. About three, three weeks ago, I was at Fred Meyer's uh, doing, doing some shopping. My wife was in another part of the store, and I was at the self-checkout, and there's a woman there who has been there for years and helps people if they have trouble. And she came up and she said, you look so much better than you did when a few years ago when you'd come in and you'd sit on that bench there, and I'd be sitting on the bench waiting for my wife. What have you done? Mm -hmm. And I briefly told her, she said, well, you know what? You look 20 years younger mm -hmm. than you did a couple of years ago. I was just blown away, mm -hmm. totally blown away, that what a change this has made, even just in my looks mm -hmm. and the, how people perceive what I look like. So I would encourage anybody with interest in this, look forward to an interview that that you people might do with Dr. Duncan and hear what he has to say. It's just, it's amazing. Well, uh, thank uh, you so much for giving me the opportunity to share this story because I think people really need to hear it. Without a doubt, without a doubt. And a special thanks uh, to you, Larry, for joining us here because our viewing audience uh, can benefit in so many different ways from the various things that you shared here on the broadcast. And we will have Dr. Duncan on an upcoming show here on Northwest Digital News. Kevin Hunter, Chris Bornstead, Great. and Kyle Torgerson here at the broadcast desk on Northwest Digital News. Special thanks to Larry Byman for joining us here on the broadcast. Kyle, take it away. This concludes today's live programming on Northwest Digital News. Thanks for joining us for this special broadcast. Heard around the world in more than 70 countries on YouTube, Instagram, Patreon, Facebook, and Twitch TV. If you enjoyed a story or guest we had here on Northwest Digital News and would like to strut your stuff on the broadcast, email us today at wainfo2017 at gmail.com or call or text 360-545-3501. We're always interested in unique stories, topics, and guests to share with our worldwide audience. Before you go, don't forget to give us a big thumbs up and comment on the live stream. And for those of you who'd like to financially support the broadcast, you can do so at patreon.com forward slash Northwest Digital News. We thank you for your patronage. On behalf of Chris Bornstead, Kyle Torgerson, Stephanie Hunter, and all the people that made this broadcast possible, I'm Kevin Hunter. Till next time, take care.